Avery Sunshine, welcome to my soul. And Thank the UK. You. It's not your first time here, though, is it? No, no, no. no, no. Okay. You were born in uh, Chester, Pennsylvania, suburb of Philadelphia. Yes, nine miles south of Philadelphia. My nine dad, miles. Yeah, my dad told me I have to say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so what, at what age did your interest in music begin? Eight. Aged eight? It may, it may have been earlier than that, but that's, the, the, that's what I can remember. I remember eight. Because that was the year that I told my mother, I have to play the piano. I have to. Okay. So I don't care what you do, but I have to have a piano. So did they rush out and buy you a piano? No, she did not. <laughs> but she said, listen, if I get it, you're going to practice every day. And uh, she did. It didn't take her long, though. I stayed on her about it. But she, she got me a piano. I'll never forget it. So apart from playing the piano, you spent a lot of your, your formative years yeah. singing in church. Yeah. Um, a lot of great singers come out of the yeah. church. Yeah. Um, what was that like for you? Was that your first foray into live performing? Um, yeah, absolutely, to, 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 for performing. Um, and I, I never did any solos or anything like that. I always sang in the choir. I was in the back, you know, watching the choir directors and, you know, had no idea I was going to be directing choirs or anything, but I, you know, yeah, so that, that was a, a, that was something I looked forward to every week, you know, uh, more than anything else. What, you, you say you, d you didn't do any solos. Why no, was that? No, no, I, I wasn't confident in that. I was like, my voice is good enough to sing in the background. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll stay in the back. Since I like to do this, I'll just stay in the back. If I sing a solo, they're going to put me out. So no, I'll just, you know. You're completely under front now. Yeah, I singing mean. Singing <laughs> solos for fun. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm all, yeah. What's happened? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I was, you know, kind of pushed out there. I started singing solos by default. You know, I ended up becoming a choir director, and I'd assign solos to the choir members, and then they wouldn't show up. And then, you know, it'd be time for the song, and instead of me changing the song, I'd be like, fine, all right, I'll just sing the solo. <gasps> Y'all follow me. You know, that's what happened. That's what happened. So who was inspiring you in your formative years before you started, started out in your own career? Oh, my parents. My parents, they, they exposed me to... Uh, Oh my God, all the great music they exposed me to, clearly because I was in the area, but Patti LaBelle and, the, you know, The Sound of Philadelphia and, you know, uh, Gamble and Huff, uh, you name it, um, God, The Whispers and, you know, uh, LTD, uh, Jeffrey Osborne, that's the stuff we listened to. And my mom would, you know, she'd pull out records with Jimmy Smith and Wes Montgomery. And then my siblings who were, you know, there's a gap of like 10 or 11 years between all the older kids and then me, I get Parliament Funkadelic, you know what I mean? The Gap Band. George Clinton. George Clinton, you know. Um, so it, it, my family, they, they had a real hand in, in my musical development. So your last album has done very well. Thank you. Okay. How do you think it compares to your new one? The first record, I, I always say it was like a, it was a test for me because I, I'd never considered myself, you know, an artist. And it was my partner, Dana Johnson, who was like, look, let's try this, let's, let's do it. You should do it. You should be an artist. So I was like, all right, let's do this one record and see what happens. And it did, did kind of well. So it's time to do another record. And uh, I feel like I took the, the proverbial bull by the horns this time, said, all right, let's really do it. I'm going to own my artistry. I'm going to be an artist. And, uh, I, you know, so that, that's what we did. So I was intentional about what I sang, intentional about, um, uh, you know, the songs that we wrote, intentional about, about being, uh, being honest and transparent, or as honest and as transparent as I could be. The new album, The Sun Room, where did the title come from? Oh, gosh. We have a good friend uh, who's an artist. His name is Choreology, and uh, he, uh, he's a designer. And uh, what do you call it? What's the day they, they, they with, there's a thing in the U.S. and they say move that bus. They transform houses and all that stuff. At any rate, he did that for our studio. He came okay. in. We went out of town and came back, and the studio was completely redone. It was absolutely beautiful. All these amazing colors, yellow and green and red, and just beautiful. Was that for free? Because I got I a house that could be <laughs> doing. <laughs> I can't tell you that. <laughs> it was amazing, but I know what you mean. My house. Too. At any rate. Um, so we got back and, and we saw the room and we were like, wow, we should name the room. Our studio should have a room. And I don't, I, I say it was me, but Dana says it was his, his idea, the sunroom. Okay. So we called the studio the sunroom. And 
working on the album, and we were like, what are we going to name this album? What is it? What makes sense? We're like, the sunroom. Because in a sunroom, you can talk about, it's just safe space in your home. It's your, your, your place of uh, tranquility or your, 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 the no judgment zone is what I call it, you know, yeah. in my home. And uh, why not have an album that way? And we can talk about whatever we want to talk about. We don't have to, you know, this album is just going to be about the color green. This album is just going to, no, no. How about the sunroom? We can talk about green. We can talk about giraffes. We can talk about money. We can talk about love. We can talk about sweat. Whatever it is we want to talk about, we can do that in the sunroom. And we hope that we encourage other people to, to be as free with their, their emotions and their, you know, that conversation, you know, as we have with this album. So, so the room not only has its own name, yep. it has an album named after it. How about it? <laughs> How about That's it? That's quite special for a room. <laughs> it must be a special it's room. A really special You're going to have to send me a picture Absolutely. of this room. Absolutely, <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> so, who helps you on the album? Who worked with you on the album? Oh, of course, my partner Dana Johnson. I always say there. Give him a little wave. Just over there. Hey, Dana. Dana. He's over there. <laughs> you know, he likes to be in the cut and kind of quiet. The silent partner. No. Uh, me um, too. Yeah, oh, um, <laughs> um, amazing musicians. Daniel Moore out of Atlanta, amazing um, producer and keyboardist. Uh, uh, Damien DeSandys, who did the track for Time to Shine. Uh, Clarence T. Lee Hill did the track for Sweet Afternoon, who has his own group uh, called Four Corners. You've got to pick that up. Um, it's amazing, amazing record. I have to make, you, know, you have to make sure you tell, you talk about the people who help and who are doing things as well, because you just, we are not where we are simply because of us. Yeah, they're the forgotten ones, let's not forget them. Absolutely, we cannot forget the people, you know what I mean, we just can't, so I like to take the time to, 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 to say that. Um, uh, I like to always say that we, we took a little bit of R. Kelly's band. Uh, one of our good friends, Maurice Fitzgerald, plays bass for R. Kelly, and okay. he and a couple of other members from the R. Kelly's band, uh, Rodney East and Andre, uh, Oh, it's Andre's last name. I can't think of it. But you'll know who you are. They came, they came and they played on the album while they were in town doing a show with R. Kelly. Uh, just bless That's us. Fantastic. Just bless us. It's nuts. Nuts. So we've got amazing folk on the record. And um, so, so we're really proud of it. Am I missing anybody, Dana? Other than a host of other amazing musicians on there. Little John Roberts, who just put out a record. Little John Roberts, okay. uh, Shante Can, Anita, Anita Wilson. I've got some of my amazing artist friends on the record, whistling. Whistling. <laughs> they're not even doing. They're not even singing or anything. They're just whistling. How does the publishing work with that? <laughs> yeah, don't talk about. Pu <laughs> there is no publishing for whistling. <laughs> No, 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 but they, you talk about people who are so humble and so gracious to come and just do whatever we, you know, Shantae Can, an amazing vocalist. She's uh, been featured on a tune with Snarky Puppy. She decided, really? Yes. Okay. Came to the studio and just whatever we needed her to do. So she's on a track just talking. Fantastic. <laughs> with us, you know, and it, we really appreciate that. It's a great album. I actually really like the album, Thank actually. You so much. And on the next one, I want to come and play Triangle or something. Brilliant. We have yeah. somebody playing Gong on there. Just. There you go. That was See? it. That's all he did. You got to fly me over first class. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to hold you to that. We've got it on tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be right for me to sit here and, and interview and not mention the, um, the track, which, which is it's, it's taken, I think, the UK by storm, wow. which you probably wouldn't realize is ugly part of me. Really? Really. And it's the, it's the Terry Hunter mix. Yes. Because we've got a big soulful house scene here. Yes. And, and the Terry Hunter mix. How did that come about? Because I've heard the original, yeah, and I've heard the mix, yeah, and they're like chalk and, and cheese. Absolutely. But so, Chicago was we say the, you know, the birthplace of Avery Sunshine because they started playing Ugly Part of Me on the radio. Okay. And um, so we attracted, you know, Chicago is the 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 the, the, the birthplace of house. So they say. So they say. <laughs> Um, Terry Hunter heard the, heard the record and was like, listen, I'd like to, to remix it. And he sent us a couple of tracks. And the track that he intended for Ugly, I never even heard it. The other one he sent, I was like, what's that? I said, Dana, what is that? Put it in. I want to record to it right now. So I re-sang everything. 
So it you almost is adopt. like a different song. It yeah. really is. And, uh, and it worked. We sent Damon sent it to him. He was like, that's not the track that I sent for that one. But hey, let's, let's, let's roll with that. Let's roll with it. And it worked. <laughs> it does work. It, it's it a great does. track. So what inspires you on a daily basis? What, you know, what, what makes you get out of bed? My children. My... Uh, Do you want to say hello to your children? Hmm? Do you want to say hello to your children? Hey, sweet peas. Do what you're supposed to do, so I don't have to come home and do what parents do. And lay it down. No, 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 no. I've got great kids. I've got great kids. Yet yeah, wanting to, to, wanting my children to see me be the best me that I can be, inspires me. Yeah. Wanting them to see me be honest, because that's the best example. You know what I mean? They need to see me do it. You yeah. can't say do this. You need to be honest, and you need to clean your room, and you need to. Mm. I have to be honest. I have to clean my room, right? Yeah. You know. I got a cleaner for that. Okay. I, I, I've been trying to tell them. Yeah. <laughs> so what? What do you listen to when you're at home relaxing? What What, what do you listen to? Lately, you know, which is so strange. Lately, I have not been listening to the radio. But no. But when I do or, or music, my daughter. I'm listening to whatever my daughter's listening to because she's the she's the music head in the house now. So she's always on Spotify. She's got me listening to Kimbra and a guy named Junie. And uh, Dana, who else does she have, does she have us listen to? Ki Hiatus Coyote. Okay. Yeah, and he <laughs> said, okay. <laughs> they were saying, it is, no, 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 it's Hiatus Coyote. Okay. I swear it is. <laughs> it's Hiatus Coyote. <laughs> um, you know, wh whatever it is that, that she's into, she's so... She's so in tune. She's 14, and she's, okay. you think she'd be listening to Rihanna and all. She's like, yeah, that's cool, but what's this Herbie Hancock thing over here? Okay. Yes. Yeah, you see, now that's a better okay yeah. than the first one. Yeah, yeah, see, see. <laughs> Uh-oh, see. But yeah, yeah, so. Generally, how does it feel to have a, such a positive response to the music that you make? Because we, you know, we, we genuinely like your music you make here in the UK. Yeah. How does that, you know, translate to you? If, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd be crazy if I said, oh, God, it, just, it feels great. It is, um, I'm learning to, I think I heard, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Quincy Jones say, you, you, you have to take it all kind of in stride, though. The, mm. the, you know, the, the love as well as the hate, because, you know, it's, be careful taking it all in because you as as much as you love to hear all of the the accolades it's hard when you hear something that is like oh, i didn't really like that it's like well wait a minute i don't want to hear what you have to say but but it's like but you want to hear all the other stuff too right but so you have to balance it and 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 not let that uh dictate or guide guide your your artistry so to speak but yes it does feel good i can't lie it feels freaking great <laughs> It does. Out of you, I mean, I like the album, The Sunroom. Yeah. What's your favorite track on the album? It's a hard Can't question. I know. That? I know it's a hard question, but you know, if, if you I had, had to, to pick, pick one, see you when I get there, and that song, um, it means so much to me. One, because I had a drink right before I sang the whole thing down, and it, this, uh, and I say that because it was I needed to do that so that I could relax, and 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 not obsess over every little thing. And, uh, and I don't really drink. If I do drink, it's something like Bailey's, so I'm not a hard drinker, but they gave me Hennessy that night. Okay. They were like, drink it. I was like, oh. <laughs> and after it finished burning, I was all right, let's go, let's sing it. <laughs> sang the whole thing down and um, tried to sing it again and it just didn't have the same vibe. So we left the original track with me singing like the scratch track. We left that and uh, with pitchiness and all of that, but it, it was true, it was honest. And, uh, and the song simply is about, you know, doing what you know you're supposed to do and allowing the voice that's on the inside of you to be louder than all of the voices around you because that's where the truth lies. And uh, so the song says, you know, you go your way and I'll go mine. I'll see you when I get there. So there was no chance of you having another drink and singing it again. No, that was that was definitely no, because that would have been a different. That would have been a mom's <laughs> Mabley kind of thing. That would have been all bad. 
So no. you're doing um, Isn't an Assembly Halls this Friday yes. at no, 7, 8 o'clock. So what time is it, guys? 7 or 8, 8 o'clock? It's at 8 o'clock. This Friday? This Friday. And then on Saturday you're doing? Um, I'm doing uh, I'll Be in Hove. Oh, in Brighton? And Brighton, yes. Okay, you're going to enjoy that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And anything else or just those two gigs? Just, just those two. Okay, and when yeah. you think of coming back, because I'm going to say you're going to go Peter, home. when are we coming back? <laughs> no, hopefully very, very, very soon. We love it here. Yeah, we love, we love having you here. So what's next after this album, is it? A tour, is it? A new and album? We're on the perpetual tour. We're, per, we're always, always recording. What we, what we will do that we didn't do uh, for this last record, we're going to continue to record. Because <laughs> I feel like we got to a point, we were like, we hadn't been in the studio in eight months. Was because you know we had a good problem. We were we were touring, so when we're home, get in the studio and work. So when it's time to put out another record, we'll we'll be ready. So you're keeping that momentum going <laughs> yeah, then. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. That's something we've learned. Well, it's nice having you here. It's a great album. The Thank Sunroom so is fantastic. Much. I hope it does well. I know it's number yes. eleven in the Billboard chart. Yeah. So it debuted at number. 11. Debuted at number eleven. Yeah. Well, you know the only place there is to go higher, isn't it? Really? I like to think that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And hopefully next time we sit here, it'll be another album and, Absolutely. and a bigger tour. Absolutely. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much.